Okay, so just to quickly summarize again what we've done here, we've got our Phonebook application. I'm going to go ahead and run that. And I'll just minimize our main application here behind it so we can see it against the desktop. And of course we've got the functionality where it's calling everything from the database. And we can delete items by simply highlighting them and pressing delete. And then we can of course add items by just typing them in here and pressing add and the list will refresh itself. Okay, so that's interacting with our database, that's our application, and we're doing it via PHP. I'm going to close that down and we'll go into our database just to confirm what we just looked at. There's our database information. Of course, this is our PHP MyAdmin. It's part of PHP Triad that we installed in the beginning of this chapter, and it allows us to administer the database. Also, we can manipulate this database freely using PHP, um, whether that's from our autoplay applications or our websites or wherever we like. Okay, so that's our database. I'm going to close that down. And we're going to, I'm going to close down my application here. We're going to take a look at another option here. Okay, so basically what we've achieved is what we call dynamic functionality. And that's the important concept that uh, we hope that you'll walk away from this chapter with. Basically, you've got information that's changing rather than information that's static. So if you hand somebody a brochure for your company, that's static information. It's not going to change. But if you hand them a virtual brochure on a CD-ROM, that connects to your remote database to retrieve, for example, pricing information for your products, that's going to be relevant no matter what. And of course, as time goes on, you can freely um, provide upgrade downloads for that application and whatnot. So the main point being that by managing your information dynamically instead of in a static matter, you're able to create a higher level of relevance for your applications. Okay, now, one of the problems with the solution that we've showed in this chapter, the PHP MySQL solution, is that it's remote. The user has to have a connection to the internet. If you go to autoplay.org, that's the Autoplay Media Studio add-on site, and then click on SQLite Database here in the left side, you'll find that there's a plugin for Autoplay Media Studio which allows you to achieve the same functionality much easier and also in a local manner. So for example, um, the user's machine has this database running on it. So you're not um, having to connect to the internet and whatnot, and this will work anywhere your application is. Okay, so that's a really great solution. If you come online here, you can get a look at a sample application, and you can download a demo of the plugin, which you can install and try out. Okay, so I encourage everybody to do that. As you can see, it's really affordable, um, as all the add-ons are, and it has a little summary of what it can do here. As a matter of fact, you're going to find here uh, that the SQLite database, as you can see here, is also a faster solution um, in the case of applications like our Autoplay Media Studio Phonebook. So the final discussion that I want to leave you guys with here is the, the question of where you would apply this sort of functionality. Okay, if you're just trying to put out, for example, um, brochure-like material, then don't worry too much about dynamic information unless you're providing prices or things like that that are going to change. And that's the main thing you want to look at. Is your information going to change or is it going to stay the same? So I tend to enjoy using dynamic information a lot more so that even if I don't anticipate a change at this point, later on down the line, um, if a change presents itself, then I'm able to go ahead and add that quite quickly and, of course, with no expense. Okay, so that's a, a summary of, of this functionality, this database functionality, and let's also discuss the PHP functionality. Now, PHP can do certain things that none of these plugins can do. For example, create PDF files on the fly from scratch. So if you wanted to pro provide a customer from your application with a customized quote, for example, based upon their specific needs, and then apply a formula to that and print it out as a PDF for them, you could do that using PHP from your Autoplay Media Studio application. So it's important to be familiar with PHP and the possibilities it provides you. It's really easy to learn and I encourage everybody to go on Google and type in PHP tutorial and take a look at some of the stuff that's out there. And the final word on this topic is, well first of all that I hope everybody found it helpful and that it basically provided them with some value. But the final word on this topic is that if you have any questions about using PHP with Autoplay Media Studio or integrating a database into your applications, just come to our web forum at indigoros.com slash forums and we'll be happy to help you out. Come on into the Autoplay Media Studio 5.0 general discussion forum, post your question and we'll probably have an answer for you within an hour or two and we'll be happy to walk you through the process and help you out in any way that you need. Okay, so that's a discussion of using dynamic PHP and MySQL information with Autoplay Media Studio projects. Let's go on to the next chapter.